Hello everyone. We are going to do some underwater cave runs. There's at least, um, we're going to hit at least eight more dossiers, but I was going through and even after we hit these eight, we are still missing 46 dinosaur dossiers. So here we go. The problem is, I don't even know what they are. So if you know what they are, let me know. Because we've got to get them all. And we have 46 that we got to figure out what they are. I know at least one of them, like I think the Rhinonathia I know has one. We got to find it. But I can't off the top of my head think of any other one. Um, Actually, you know what? One of these is the Allosaurus, so I know that's one we don't have because um, they're in alphabetical order. So Allosaurus is in here somewhere. Um, so again, if you know what ones I'm missing, let me know down in the comments and we will do those too. Um, after we do these eight, I will see how long the video actually is. So we might add more than just those eight. And we will keep going until we get them all. So we will be heading off to the next cave. I will see you then. All right, we are at our first cave. And we deal with that. <laughs> we are at the red obelisk. I know it's hard to see, but the red obelisk is there, I promise. There we go. Red obelisk right there behind us. Okay. We are at latitude 85.3, longitude 70, or 7.9, sorry. And we're gonna go into depths here. So we are looking, we got this rock, that rock, right here. Now, in ASE, the caves had bubbles that would come up. Unfortunately, I don't see any. And I know this cave is right down here. any bubbles coming from it. So I don't know if they did away with that now, but it's gonna make it a whole lot more difficult to find caves. So we're gonna scoot our way in here. And it used to be that it would be right here, but it's not there. It's up here. What is that? Is that an alpha something stuck in the rock? I think it is. Dilophosaurus spudatrix is a strange creature. It stands at just over half the size of known Dilophosaurs and runs from aggressors as often as it fights them. Dilophosaurus spudatrix has a few traits not common in the Dilophosaurus genus. It has a very shrill call 
and a decorative ridge of skin on its neck. I believe these are used to attract mates, as well intimidate prey and would-be predators. Instead of attacking its prey outright, Dilophosaurus spudatrix spits venom to weaken and paralyze it before moving in for the kill. Because of their shrill cry and their ability to attack intruders from range, Dilophosaurus seem most suited as guard dogs. Due to their small size, they are not suitable as mounts. There we go. And that is Dilophosaurus. And I'm half tempted to swim around this rock because I'm pretty sure that's an alpha something that has spawned into the rock. Is that another cave? That looks like another cave. Huh. I don't know what that light could be inside the cave other than the dinosaur spawned inside the rock. All right. Well, we're off to the next one. All right, we are at the next cave and you might recognize this spot from our last video because this is the spot for the Caverns of Lost Faith. So if you go on down here, you're gonna see this is the area for the Caverns of Lost Faith. What we're going to do is move on down here. The cavern is right there, right where Siren's nose is. That's the Caverns of Lost Faith. We are going to follow this around. And it should be... Super dark. There it is.
Titano Myanmar is one of the smaller creatures on the island. A frightening thought when you realize it is the size of a dog. A hive-minded carnivore, Titano Myanmar is aggressive on sight to humans and their creature companions. When attacked or threatened, it releases a chemical which alerts all other Titano Myanmar in a large range to help fight the aggressor. While small, Titano Myanmar remain a threat because of their bite. Titano Myanmar mandibles produce a toxic venom that causes loss of stamina, preventing escape and increasing the chance of losing consciousness. I've seen two varieties of Titano Myanmar, drones and soldiers. Drones are smaller, faster and landbound, with the intent to harvest for the colony. Soldiers are larger, slower, have wings and they defend the colony. If Titano Myanmar is akin to hive insects, there must be queens too. But I have yet to encounter such a variant. Because of its hive mentality, I've not seen any successfully tamed Titano Mirma on the island yet. Fortunately for lone survivors, separated Titano Mirma can be easily picked off for a small supply of chitin, among other natural resources. And there we go. suit back on and we are off to the next one all right so we are at the next one these are the this is the iceberg the big one in the corner that's what that one is and we're right in the next one next to it at latitude 12.4 longitude 5.6 and here's the the land section I'm trying to see and what we're going to do is head on down here. So you want this pokey rock right here, pokey rock, seaweed, and there's another rock. So we're going to go just on the other side of this seaweed along this rock here. And it is right there. So here we go. Very hard to see. Oh, we finally see bubbles. <laughs> Can I get up there, please? Thank you. faster than Tyrannosaurus, larger but slower than Carnotaurus. Allosaurus theratribus is the island's resident pack-hunting theropod. While most aggressive theropods are relatively solitary creatures, Allosaurus lives in groups of three. One Allosaurus is the alpha, while the others are its mates, or a beta male. Like humans find value in forming a tribe, the Allosaurus has evolved to hunt in packs. Its saw-shaped teeth leave its prey bleeding and maimed, making escape difficult. Once an Allosaurus slows a creature with its cutting bite, the rest of its pack quickly closes in for the kill. Not everyone thinks a tamed Allosaurus is ideal. Those who appreciate speed generally tame Carnotaurus, while those who value raw stopping power tame Tyrannosaurus. However, riders of Allosaurus tend to respect the utility of its alpha pack status, which along with its bleed-inducing attacks and relative mobility can effectively turn the tide of a combined arms battle. There we go. There is Allosaurus. And we are off to the next one. All right, so we found the next one. We are right here at latitude 
V, longitude 17.1. And there. We were getting attacked, not anymore. All right, so here's what it looks like on land. There's um, the blue obelisk is right there in the top center of the screen. We're going to go right down here. All right. So you see the big pokey rock and this like almost flat rock in front of it. So we're going to head down to the big pokey rock with the little pokey rock. <laughs> All right. And then you got the oil and it is right here. So we're going to head on in here. of pearls in here. Where's... There it is. So you have to go up and around. Like most trilobites, Trilobite Conchodurus is an opportunistic carnivore that feeds on anything smaller than itself which it can get a hold of. A sluggish creature, the trilobite's best defense is its incredibly hard shell. This seems to be a common adaptation for the slower creatures of the island. Trilobite is not a very good source of food. The creature seems to be made mostly out of internal organs and its protective carapace. This is good for the trilobite, as both river and ocean predators are less likely to prey on it if there are better options around. The trilobite does not seem to have enough intelligence to be tamed. This doesn't mean it has no use among resourceful survivors, however. Found along beaches and in the ocean's shallows, trilobites are easily one of the best sources of oil, pearl, and chitin on the island. Presuming one doesn't wish to venture into the dangerous caves. That would be me. I hate caves. Underwater caves even more so. All right, but there are a lot, a lot of shells and in here get all kinds of pearls. <laughs> all right. And we are off to the next one. All right, we are at the next one. As you can see, we are basically at the mouth of the river in the snow biome where the waterfall is. Latitude 6.6, .6, longitude 40.1. So that's kind of what this looks like up here. And we're going to head on down. And what you're looking for is this huge rock formation. You 
can't miss this rock formation. It's a big rock formation, and you see this rock sitting next to it? That's the rock we want. Again, there's an oil node right here, so that kind of gives, that's just like the last water cave. And we're gonna try and fit Siren's big butt in here. I'm surprised Siren has fit into all these caves. Again, lots and lots of pearl and crystal in this one. Carbonemis obibimus is one of the least aggressive creatures on the island. Were it not for the plethora of predators on the island, I'm quite certain that it would spend its days basking in the sun, eating or sleeping. Carbonemis leads a simple, solitary life. Nevertheless, it seems to be one of the most peaceful animals I've yet encountered. With its slow walking speed, the only things that keep it safe are its surprisingly fast swim speed and its incredibly thick shell, which can absorb tremendous damage. Carbonemi's swift swim rate, fairly high strength, superior shell defenses, and lack of real threat makes it an ideal armored mount for many survivors who shy away from violence. It can carry its rider to the ocean's resources at fairly high speed, and it's not particularly dangerous to tame. There we go. <laughs> Siren barely fits into this cave. <laughs> Button. All right, we are off to the next one. See you guys in a bit. All right, so here we are at the next one. You see a little island there, the mountain up there, Pokey Rock over there. We are at latitude 33.3, longitude 94.3. And we're gonna head straight down. All right, so you can see Pokey Rock, Pillar Rock. We are gonna head straight down in between the two of them. Y'all need to leave me alone, go away. These guys real quick. Go. All right. Big pillar, pokey rock, right in between them. She's taking damage. Oh, she's in combat. scuba tank on. I 
I think it's because she's so low. up here. Alright. There it is. Typically found within the island's caves, Titanoboa exornita is an aggressive creature that prefers dark, rocky areas. This extremely large snake, while being a member of the Titanoboa family, does not constrict its prey as most boas do. I believe this adaptation comes from coexisting with giant insects. However, the Titanoboa's venomous bite is so potent that it is known to paralyze far larger creatures. Titanoboa has developed a strange coexistence with other creatures of the island's caves. Being immune to knockout poisons and being unable to pierce the thick chitin of the insects the species have learned to coexist. They often hunt large prey together. As they appear immune to knockout poisons, Titanoboa exornita is basically impossible to render unconscious. Because this crucial step can't be done, I'm convinced that Titanoboa are not tameable. All right. Let's get her out of here. She's high enough strength, obviously, it's not hurting her. Alright. And that's the Titanoboa. So now we will be off to the next one. I will see you guys in a bit. All right, next one took me a minute to find because not all of the oh, no way because not all the landmarks are the same and sometimes they move things around. But I did find it. So here we are in the swamp, just outside the swamp area, latitude. 52.5, longitude 94.4. We gotta deal with a megalodon. All right. So you can use that little rock as reference here. We have, okay, so there's the rock. The green obelisk is there. There's a little Tiny rocks sticking out of the water there. Give you an idea of what it looks like. We are going to turn around. I don't know if Siren's going to fit inside this one. We will find out. So we are going to head down. And there's two pokey rocks you can kind of see in the distance. What we're looking for is this circle. See the circle right there? There's another smaller circle over there, and a big pokey rock and another semicircle there. We're heading for this center circle here. And like I said, I don't know if Siren's gonna be able to fit in this one. You see those glowy thingies? Nope, she doesn't fit. <laughs> All right. We are going to put our flippers on. And we're gonna 
swim down here. There we go. And up. Shirt off. That's that's scary sounding. Maybe they're just ambient cave noises. That's freaky, okay. Arguably the deadliest creature on the island, Tyrannosaurus dominum is a killing machine. Active mostly when hunting for food or defending its nest, a good plan is to avoid every Tyrannosaurus. It is pure power, from its stomp to its tail. It is not able to intimidate every foe with its roar, but upon hearing it, it might scare the poop out of you, quite literally. Despite being a different subspecies of Tyrannosaurus, everyone I've met still refers to them as a Rex or a T-Rex. I've long since stopped trying to convince anyone, especially the few who I've encountered wearing Tyrannosaurus teeth as necklaces. Taming a Tyrannosaurus is without a doubt the goal for any warlord or warring tribe. Tyrannosaurus is a fierce battle companion. There is a reason Tyrannosaurus is considered the king of dinosaurs, or in this genus, the lord. Any tribe that manages to tame one has almost nothing to fear. There we go. Feet back on, take our torso back on. to go looking for the 46 other ones. So I will see you later. All right, so we are literally on the backside of Herbivore Island at 91.1 latitude, longitude 94.4. So the backside of Herbivore Island. When we go in, you're gonna see spiky rock. And it is so you can see the corner end of the map right there. Right there, right above me. That's the end of the, that's the far corner of the map. So spiky rock. We're gonna go right down here. To this rock right in front of it. And it's hard to see, but you can see the little bit of red in there. That's 
our cave. Crossbreed of Triceratops and Styracosaurus, Triceratops sturax has both the characteristic three-horned face of Triceratops and the prominent horned ridge of Styracosaurus. Normally a very docile grazing animal, Triceratops becomes aggressive once angered. Triceratops will chase down would-be predators and egg stealers with incredible prejudice. Running away from Triceratops is harder than it seems due to its ability to charge and ram its target. I've seen Triceratops have an especially hostile reaction to the Tyrannosaurus, with herds attacking en masse. While not very fast, they are deadly in a group. A common mount for those that ride dinosaurs, Triceratops doubles as pack animal and combat dinosaur. Triceratops' bony ridge works excellently as cover from frontal attack and the dinosaur's charge is incredibly dangerous. It is largely protective of its kind if it senses danger. In the presence of larger carnivores that appear as a threat, Triceratops becomes stronger and rallies the effort of its nearby species. It is also capable of harvesting a sizable amount of resources with its horns by shredding fruit from the leaves, making it a very useful work companion for smaller tribes. All right. I'm going to check the video length. We will find out. If we're going to keep going. Or if we're going to end the video here. So I will see you either at base. Why can't I get through here? got stuck. I will see you guys in a bit. All right, well, this puts our video just over 30 minutes long. I don't want it to go too much longer. We still have 46 dossiers unaccounted for that we are going to be looking for in our next video. Um, I've got some research to do to figure out which ones we're missing and where they're at. If you happen to know, comment down in the comment section. Let me know which ones I'm missing, and we will get on them in the next video. I will see you all later. Bye.